Hello, X-Ray Bob here, and today we're going to talk about radioactivity. Radioactivity occurs when a nucleus has too few or too many neutrons, and in that condition, the atom is unstable. This unstable atom can de decay into a more stable state by ejecting alpha particles or ejecting beta particles or ejecting gamma rays. Those are our three forms of radioactive decay. The radioactivity is the emission of particles and energy of an unstable nucleus, a nucleus that wants to return to a ground state, a more stable state. Here we have a picture showing the nucleus of an atom consisting of protons and neutrons. And here's alpha radiation. Here's beta radiation. Those two are our particulate radiation. And here's our gamma radiation, which is an electromagnetic wave. Those are the three types of radioactive decay. We'll go into more detail on each. Our beta emission occurs from a moderately unstable nucleus, and what happens is a neutron decays into a proton and an electron. Since the electron is much lighter than the proton, it's ejected from the atom at a very high speed, while the proton remains behind in the nucleus. And that extra proton in the nucleus means we've increased the atomic number but we haven't changed the atomic mass, so we see that iodine has gone to xenon because we've got one more proton, a higher atomic number, um, but the atomic mass remains the same because a proton and a neutron weigh about the same. And here we see our little beta particle, which is really identical to an electron, except it formed by a decaying nucleus. Our next form of particulate radiation is the alpha emission, and this uh, has to occur from a more, more unstable nucleus, a larger nucleus, and this is when a large chunk of the nucleus breaks off. So in this case, an extremely unstable nucleus emits an alpha particle, and that alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons. And as we see, uh, radon transforms, and we've gone from an atomic number of 88 to an atomic number of 86, because we've lost two protons, and we've also gone from an atomic mass of 226 down to 222 because we've lost four nucleons, two neutrons and two protons. And we see the emission of an alpha particle, which is identical to a helium atom, except it's got no electrons. A helium atom would have two protons and two neutrons, but it would also have two electrons orbiting it. An unstable nucleus can also emit electromagnetic radiation, and we call this gamma radiation. No particle is ejected from the nucleus in this form of decay, therefore no change in atomic mass and no change in atomic number. There's often excess strong nuclear force, which is the force that holds the nucleus together after a very unstable nucleus emits an alpha emission, and that atom releases this excess energy after that alpha emission release by emitting a gamma ray. Here we see our two particulate radiations, alpha and beta, and our one electromagnetic radiation gamma rays. The alpha particles, which are large, are stopped by a sheet of paper or your skin. The beta particles, which are the size of an electron, have the ability to penetrate much further, but may be stopped by something like an aluminum sheet. And gamma rays, like our X-rays, have much more penetrability and would need something like lead, steel, or concrete to stop it. All right, that's a wrap on the three forms of radiation that occurred during radioactive decay. And I'll follow this up with some math problems showing uh, us how we can calculate half-lives or how we can calculate the radiation that remains after a period of decay has occurred. All right, so this is X-Ray Bob out.